I am still recovering from my post-con flu, quote-unquote, from DreamHack, but I have a lot of microphones I need to get out to you guys, and I think my voice is mostly recovered enough that I can do this thing. And so today we're taking a look at this microphone you can probably barely see compared to my normal obnoxious microphone array. This is the Aston Stealth microphone, and this is a $400 dynamic broadcast microphone that's described as being an active one for some really cool features, and it's a really interesting microphone that I think might be able to replace my RE320 that I've been using recently if I were get to, getting to keep it. But this is on loan from Aston, and no one's paying for this review before it's posted, no one's seeing it, none of that stuff. It's not a sponsored review, it is just on loan from the company, but I am really glad I checked out this microphone. So again, this is the Aston Stealth. It is a long black cylinder. It has a couple interesting features when it comes to the physical build right up front. It has a nice little foam filter that's supposed to act as a bit of a pop filter or windscreen out of the box. However, there is still some plosives, and I'm going to get to that right now. Puh, 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 puh. Like, th th I'll talk about this more in a minute, but the microphone definitely suffers from the proximity effect, which you might want to take advantage of, but you actually need, like for a lot of recordings, to actually back yourself away from the microphone, or at least have it at kind of like an angle here, or otherwise you start like causing plosives and breath sounds, which I'm not a fan of. And then it has a really interesting mounting system. You can see here it has a little clip. It has a really interesting built-in clamp mounting system where you just kind of push the thing in and then screw it onto your mic arm, and you can pull it in and out for like, it's essentially like a quick release plate but for, for your microphone. And this concept is pretty genius. However, I did have some, have some issues when I was using it over at my game streaming setup where bumping the desk, don't know how much you heard that, would still cause some rumble in the microphone despite the fact that it's supposed to have a built-in basically shock mount within the microphone enclosure itself. I'm still getting some of that rumble that with something like this kind of shock mount I don't normally notice. So that was a little disappointing. And then it has a button on the bottom and that is to activate the LED. There is a tiny subtle little purple LED indicator to indicate whether or not it's receiving phantom power because this microphone's superpower is pretty much that it has its own preamp built in, and it is hella good. Before we get to that, I want to finish the physical overview because that will affect what I say about the preamp, and that there is this little knob around the base of the microphone which changes the different voices that the microphone has. Now typically, I would take this as like marketing garbage and just, you know, it's just like basically flipping the switch on a microphone for the different like flat versus bass roll off bases, things like that. But these are genuinely different voices that have different frequency responses on the frequency response graph, and they even have different gain levels, and they sound radically different. Like I have a screenshot here, the different voices record at different gain levels, and so you have to actually adjust your gain based on that because V2 is like way much, way hotter than the other ones and the dark mode requires a lot more gain than the others and it's very interesting. But so there is four different voices. There's V1, which is optimized more for the typical male voice and that is what I'm using right now. And I'm actually going to switch through them here a little bit and then I'll have some comparison testings. Now we are on V... Now we are on V2, which is more optimized for female voices and singing according to, you know, their little instruction manual here. I do want to complain, both online in the PDF and in the physical included instruction manual they give, it's more like a product catalog for all of their different microphones, not just the one that you have. And so there's not as much, like, in-depth technical stuff as I would prefer to be included on a dedicated product manual. This is the G mode, which is supposed to be for guitars. And the knob you have to adjust basically by grabbing it like this and rotating. If you try to use your fingers or grab it any other way, it won't let you rotate it, which is supposed to be a mechanism for studios to prevent artists from changing the settings or accidentally bumping it during moving or whatever on accident, whereas only the engineers know how to change it, so it doesn't ever get changed, which I really like the idea of. It's just kind of annoying as an individual creator trying to test it all, trying to rotate it all the time. So this is the G guitar mode. Now this is the D mode, which is the dark mode that's supposed to emulate vintage ribbon mics. So it has a completely different sound and requires quite a bit more gain. So I'm just kind of talking loudly and getting up close on this microphone because it is a very different voice. So far, of course, my favorites for my voice, no surprise, V1, which is the male optimized voice and that typically favors, you know, what my voice puts out. And then the D mode for the ribbon voice. However, I did notice, I mentioned that this has a built-in preamp. This is a huge feature that would actually save you a bit of money compared to a similarly priced $400 microphone that you would then have to pair with 
a FET head or a cloud lifter or something like that. And the microphone built into it is really good. I originally had all of my tests hooked up with the FET head, so I had phantom power coming from my mixer, which is the Soundcraft Signature 12 multitrack. Phantom power running into the FET head, and then FET head powering the microphone. And I had to keep my gain at like 85 to 90% gain, which is not something you want to do on any interface or mixers preamps. And so it was already starting to get to the point of needing its own, you know, providing its own electrical noise and background hiss and things like that. But it was also picking up more background noise in general, requiring that much gain. Just the signal starts to fall apart on just about any hardware at that much gain. Hook up the uh, internal preamp and enable that where basically I take this out still enable phantom power It has a built-in automatic switch which will detect whether phantom power is running to the microphone or not And it's either in passive mode without it or active mode where it detects the phantom power and activates the preamp And that's what that LED indicates. I needed much less gain We're talking like 30 to 35 percent gain on my mixer instead and the signal is so much cleaner and for the most part it sounds the same. However, I did notice I feel like the dark mode, which I believe is what I'm still talking in now, on the active mode without a FET head, sounds a little bit more like muddy or a little bit like darker almost, which is funny, uh, than it does with the FET head. And so I'm using this now and I have a couple samples. I recorded my little three rings for the Elven King's Lord of the Rings quote with both option and options enabled. But I really feel like there is a slight impact on the sound with active versus passive mode, specifically on that voice, not on the rest of the voices. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to V1 now. And I'm gonna let the audio go for a little bit. This is V1 with a little bit of post-processing applied. I don't like doing this a ton in my OBS audio because it's AAC 320 kilobit, which is still great, but adding post-processing kind of makes things a little funky. But I wanna show you at least what I think I can get sound-wise out of it. This is nothing too crazy. And then in a few minutes, I will, or in a moment, I will include the comparison of the different voices with my normal reading quote as well as a comparison to my re320 which is what i've been using for some videos lately and i just finally got rid of my dbx processing box everyone likes to complain about and finally just processing it to where it sounds like my sennheiser mkh 416 so i'm going to try to replicate that on here however if you look at the uh frequency response curves for the two microphones side by side the re320 and the aston stealth you can see that they have similar looking or like similarly intended frequency response curves where you got the little bump in the high end before it rolls off. However, the 320 has a serious proximity effect because there's specifically a one centimeter distance chart that just cranks up the low end there. Uh, but then when you get to the high end of the graph, they both have a little bit of a bright bump. But RE320s is like all over the place and then drops down right before 20 kilohertz and then spikes back up. It's, it's very different looking, but they are similarly looking microphone so i'm hopefully i can get like a similar sound out of it because like i said i am in love with this microphone in terms of the built-in preamp sounding so freaking phenomenal like i want that in my 320 or my re20 the built-in preamp is amazing and like i said would save you money because if you're buying a 400 hundred dollar microphone and then have to buy a 100 hundred dollar fet head or or cloud lifter then you're spending 500 dollars instead of 400 dollars to get similar sound potentially and you know similar cleanliness and so I love how clean the signal is. I love the different voices that actually makes it more versatile for different use without having to spend as much time EQing for those specific voices. And you can get a few different sounds out of it. Use it for music, use it for voices. It is quite heavy. The internal uh, mount, like I said, doesn't necessarily shock mount it as much as I would like. And that's disappointing because it doesn't seem like there's another option. And the included pop filter, in my opinion, is not a very great pop filter. And so I, I kind of want to mount something on the front that will p -p -p diffuse my plosives a little bit more. But it's meant to be used in a studio and in more professional recording environments where there's less background noise. I have my computer running super hot right now to record this, which is also why I do my actual comparison tests and audition where my computer fans aren't very loud. You know, it, this isn't its ideal environment, but... I'm pretty stoked for this microphone other than a few of the shortcomings. And like I said, if I were keeping this, this would probably replace the microphone for my main microphone for quite some time. And you guys can give some feedback whether or not it's worth it compared to what I just showed versus the RE320 because that's what I've been using right now. And this is a new sound I'm using with it. So you can let me know whether you would like to would prefer the 320 as I just showed it or this microphone. And maybe we can influence whether I trade one for the other with somebody or something like that. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. 
three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. This is on V1. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. V2. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. This is on G. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. This is in D in dark mode, which requires even more gain. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. And this is the D Dark Ribbon mode. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. And this is the D Dark Ribbon mode. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Product links, as always, will be in the description below, as well as Podcastage's, Podcastage's, I can't say his name, his review, he does a, a little bit more in-depth with the music side and some of the technical details about the microphone in regards to recording equipment that... I honestly am just not at a capacity to cover because I'm not a musician nor a singer and nobody wants to hear that. So I will include a link to his review as well because he always does a great job and was able to review it much quicker than I am because I took a month or two to actually finish this. Sorry, Aston. I need to send this back now. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech, education, and production gear reviews. I'm Vox here to make that tech easier and more fun. And I'll see you in the next video.